of the most wretched song ever. <laughs> if you're just joining us, remember to like, subscribe, hit the share button. We're back at Ignorant Millennials, and I'm your host, Lesedi. I'm alone today, but not really alone. I'm with Karabo. Karabo, who are you? Where are you from? Why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I'm welcome. Karabo Malamidi. I am an engineer, okay. trained as an engineer. Okay. Um, Born and bred in Limpopo, rural Limpopo, and then I came hey, to Joburg. <laughs> yeah, rural PLK. Came to Joburg when I was about 14, 15. Okay. I've uh, been staying the side, studied at UP for about four years, and then. As an engineer, uh, four years? Yes. Okay, we'll get into <laughs> that. We'll get into and that. And then, uh, yeah, back in Joburg now, working for a multinational company for about three years and nine months now. How long have you been working? Three years and nine months. Really? Yes. So same company? Yes. yes oh wow, yes. like you. Yeah. So we usually have a quick fire uh, a session uh, on our show just to get to know a little bit more, see the fun side of you, see what you're about. Mm -hmm. So you're sort of an engineer, but we want to get to know you a little bit more before we get into your career. Yes. Um, so the first question, <laughs> would you rather be rich or famous? Definitely rich. Really? Yeah. Okay. Where, what is the oldest thing in your fridge right now? Um, Garlic. Garlic? Yes. What did you use it for? I use it to cook. To cook? Yeah. Do you live alone? Like? No. <laughs> okay. um, I live with siblings. With siblings? Oh, okay, mm. cool. If you were born into a new life, would you come back to the past or into the future? Definitely the future. Why? <laughs> because I know everything about the past, but the future is still more intriguing. Okay, get yeah. what you mean. Yeah. Okay, and would you rather have a home on the beach or a home on the mountains? Both. Both? No, you have to pick one. There's no both. <laughs> the beach. The beach? Yeah. Okay. Beachfront, mountain beachfront type of house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> engineer. It's Ish. an engineer here. And who has it easier in the kind of career you're in? Men or women? I would say men. Shamefully, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Me. Why do you say that? It's it's male dominated, and it's been so for a very long time. So it's still it's still quite skewed in terms of gender balance. But yeah, for that reason, I guess it just makes it easier for men to be a bit more comfortable and confident. Yeah. Because there's a there's a lack of camaraderie it's, also. Yes, yeah, it's okay. like a boys' club. Oh, it's like a boys' club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so did you always want to be an engineer? And what kind of engineer are you? Because I know there's like different types. Yeah, I, I actually qualified as a chemical engineer. Okay. But I work in the world of metallurgy. Um, okay, what does that mean? So I... <laughs> so in the mining industry, you have people that mine and you at the end of the day, need to extract minerals from your ore bodies. Mm -hmm. And you have then people that have to process the stuff in between. So from okay. the big piles of rock that you get on the mine to those blocks of gold that you get. Okay. I, I'm somewhere in between, in between the process, yes. Yeah, yes, so yes. do you work with a lot of machinery? Absolutely, and... yes, yes. So how does the insurance look like? Like, are you covered enough like if you break a finger or like well cut your hand off the company sort of covers you for disability for death um you know and it's quite decent something like 10 times your annual income or something like that so it's quite it's quite you quite covered so like do you, do, <laughs> like <laughs> don't you like put your hand in the machine my mistake <laughs> no i'm joking don't do that don't, yeah don't, don't, but don't do that but also there's a lot of regulations involved and companies go through a lot of processes to ensure that they train you and so forth. And so you need to be able to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, if you are found to be reckless mm -hmm. and it can be proven that you were taught otherwise, then it's, uh, yeah. What if the training wasn't good? Like what if you missed that day? <laughs> no one cares. Eee. As long as you signed. On and the you were there, line. then yeah, 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 pretty much. So let's take it back a bit. Um, would you say what you studied now at, you know, or studied in University of Pretoria, mm -hmm. what did you study? I chemical studied engineering. chemical engineering, yes. Did it help? Is it closely linked to what you do now? Yes, yes, it is. It's like the, 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 the closest thing 
to, to, to process metallurgy, I would say. Um, because in, in chemical engineering, you basically study processes or process engineering and you study the dynamic nature of processes, how to control them, how to analyze them, how to develop new processes and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and metallurgy is just, or the process metallurgy, it's basically a direct translation of that. There's obviously other branches of metallurgy, like physical metallurgy, which is a little bit different, but it's, um, you know, the process side, the extraction side of metallurgy is pretty much process engineering okay so yeah. you would say that the modules you took in varsity or you exposed to really did help you yes. now in your career yeah and i mean for for the first two years um whether you're doing mechanical mining chemical you know you pretty much study the same modules because it's maths and physics and all sorts of things and only in third and fourth year you start specializing um you know, so I, I would say the, there is a lot of similarities in the modules that you do in chemical engineering and in, in metallurgy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And just on the subject of maths and physics, did, did what, what high school modules or high school subjects should you take in order to get into um, to engineering? engineering? Well, you should absolutely take maths and science. Mm -hmm. there's, <laughs> there's no other way. Um, you reckon? Yeah. Like, yeah. what if I was brilliant at maths lit? Like, you lit don't have a chance. At maths lit. You can go and do a bridging course. Yeah. Uh, then you can get into engineering. It's strictly maths and science. Okay. And, you but know, there is that bridging opportunity if there somebody is an didn't tell you yeah. Yeah. to take maths and science. Yes. Except you were but when you do bridge, it's going to be like you're starting from where you should have started when you were doing grade nine or something like that. So it's oh, really? pretty much the same. The same thing as just doing maths in high school. And would you reckon that a tertiary education is necessary to be an engineer? Like, would you say, should somebody rather go to a Technicon or university, like just from a practical perspective or what, you know? I think it or, depends on the kind of role you want to play. Um, you know, if you want to be more hands-on, mm -hmm. it's definitely a Technicon is the place to be because it's, um, you know, you learn a lot of stuff in a practical way, like you do a lot of practicals and um, they, take, they take time to give you time on the actual workplace and in, in university it's a bit more theoretical. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be a person who is a high level theoretical type of person who just, you know, you want to be technical but not very hands on, mm -hmm. then university is for you. But you sound like you're very much hands-on and you studied at a university. I'm not. I'm oh, not, you're not? I'm not hands-on, yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I said to you I work with a lot of equipment, but, yes. you know, I it's never even means. pressed start on it. What? <laughs> on so wait, run, run me through so, your day then. <laughs> like, what do you do? So my days are very inconsistent. Okay. Um, so just, just to give you a bit of background, I work for a company that builds and supplies processing equipment to the mining industry. Okay. So I don't work for a mine yeah. where I'm like on a processing plant. Yeah. Um, I work for a company that provides solutions to those kind of guys. So yeah. my typical work is, you know, visiting those clients, auditing their processes, okay. um, doing some process analysis mm -hmm. and you know, identifying problems or identifying solutions that for problems that may be there and developing, you know, a new process mm -hmm. and actually, you know, building the concept. Um, so that, that, that involves a lot of, you know, um, analytical yeah. um, spreadsheets, calculations, you know, Did they train you on the job for, or just from your varsity it's, experience? It just, able to do I that? think, you know, after spending so much time in university, because you do a lot of that in university, you know, the assignments are, um, when you get to third and final year, the assignments become a lot more like that. So it becomes some form of second nature to you. And, and, and yeah, it, I would say from university, I came pretty much prepared. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. How, 
or from university getting to the job you're getting into prepared. the job and the kind of stuff that i'm yeah. doing there wasn't a lot of training that i had to you know go to that you'd say you know you're teaching me about this thing from scratch all i had to do when i get there is just to know how to use things like excel and yeah <laughs> you know whatever software we may need to like simulate the plant situation and stuff like that and it it was the the thing is the 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 the, the most critical item or the most critical thing that you mm -hmm. have to offer is the is a critical thinking and the 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 way or the ability to break down problems and yeah. conceptualize yeah. solutions yeah and you know so so it's it's more it's it's very much in the, in, in in your own mind yeah. that you know when you get there you can you can pretty much hit the ground running is that why yeah. then we find that so many other engineers are working in other industries and not necessarily in absolutely yeah. absolutely because i think you you trained quite a lot to to, to be a critical to, to be a critical thinker, thinker to be solver. an analytical person yeah. and when you get to a different environment it's it's it, it becomes very little about what you're actually doing yeah. it's about you know how you're approaching problems so what is the biggest misconception then that you would say people have about engineers because like i had one right now that you were you at least press the start button here you are you don't <laughs> no. even press a start button different misconceptions yeah or some of the the myths of engineering <laughs> that they are very very smart people they're just humans uh, we expect <laughs> you to be smart <laughs> okay um and that they make a lot of money we don't make that much money what <laughs> no no well, okay so let's talk about money when yeah, you start off as an engineer when you started off what is your range because people go through those years hoping to make millions when they go in. Well, you, you can make a lot of money. Okay. It just depends on, there is so much to engineering and there's so much diversity to it that a lot of people can go into, you know, people d take different paths mm -hmm. and those different paths can lead you into, you know, different places. And it's very difficult to even say, this is the benchmark mm -hmm. that, um, you know, engineers or, you know, people that were trained as engineers are supposed to be earning. Um, it depends on the company you work for. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, yeah, this. <laughs> I can tell you about, you know, somebody that's typical like me, had a bursary with like a big company, you get in there, um, you know, start working as a graduate, you get a decent salary. I'd What's say decent? like. Give us a range. Three, four hundred per annum. Starting off. Okay. Yeah. I was saying starting off. Okay. No, okay. That's what I was saying. <laughs> you know, there's a misconception that people make a lot of money in engineering. But there it's, is the potential to make like There is the potential. I mean, you can quickly go from that to, you know, I can't even say what's the limit um, because people approach it differently. There's people yeah. that are very technical and they get like their professional engineering certification and they just focus on the technical side of things. Yeah. There's and people does that sort of like give you a nice bump if you do those It does. Yeah? It does give you a nice bump. Um, there's also people that um, you know are more business minded or they want to you know tackle the business side of things that you know after getting an engineering degree they would much rather go and work in the you know in the business and finance mm -hmm. sector. So your banks, yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know too much about what kind of money they make, but that's it. They make a lot. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's another stream. Um, uh -huh. And, you know, there's people that also want to be leaders, you know, that just don't want to work. They just want to start their own businesses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those guys usually make the most money. Which which guy are you? Like, <laughs> or trying to be? <laughs> um, which guy am I trying to be or which guy am I? I'm, I'm the kind of guy that I am a little bit into the technical, okay. but I don't want to concentrate a lot of my energy into just the technical side of things. I need to, I, I'm, I'm the kind of person that wants to have a broad perspective mm -hmm. of things. So if I'm in a business and I'm in a, you know, the process engineering division, I'm not 
just gonna sit there and want mm -hmm. to know only about what happens in the process engineering division. I want to have a broader view of the business. In a way, I want to be like high up in the business, even with my engineering background. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Those big bonuses. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so now with, with all this automation happening and machines really not, you know, like machines are being automated. Yes. How does, how, how, how do you see the role changing if it's changing at all? Or how do you see engineering looking like in the future with with automation, do you think your roles are the same or? I think it's, it's gonna become a lot more interesting mm -hmm. in, in the sense that, you know, obviously engineering is, has a very strong theoretical background mm -hmm. or a very strong, you know, scientific background. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of um, scientific laws and universal laws uh, um, that in the past, because of the skills and the the, the computing capabilities that we've had have not been able to get to, you know, solutions in, you know, um, as quick a time as we would have liked. I think with now, with automation, there's so many things that you can now accomplish a lot quicker. So it unlocks engineering in a different way than we've seen before. You know, now, instead of, you know, for me to be able to predict things or Currently, for you to be able to predict things, you typically um, want to run experiments, collect mm -hmm. data, and then build a model based on that. But if you can just have a theoretical model that you are able to break down and solve um, using you know, the technological advancements that we have, then it allows you to you know, be able to get to places even before you get to places. Okay. So you can solve problems before they even exist if, if, if you look at it in that sense. And that's how I see it. Okay, yeah. now I want, to be, I want to know, are there boards that you know, verify that you are yes. an engineer? Yes, um, every country has its own. In yeah. South Africa, we have EXA, Engineering Council of South Africa. Oh, okay, and does it look at the whole engineering as a discipline or chemical engineering specifically? It looks as, so it looks at the whole engineering as a discipline. Mm -hmm. You have societies within each discipline. So you have the society for civil engineers, you have the society for chemical engineers, mechanical, but EXA looks at everyone and vets everyone and certifies everyone. So, you know, depending on what, what, what tertiary qualification you have, if you have a BTEC, if you have a diploma, if you have a degree, oh, so it also looks at it looks that. at that. And then they, 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 there's a candidacy um, level that you have to go through or a candidacy phase that you have to go through after graduating. So um, like, for instance, myself, because I qualified as a chemical engineer, I have to be like a candidate chemical engineer for some time, mm -hmm. demonstrate that I tick certain boxes. It's not a thing where you have to go write an exam and then you oh. are certified. You have to actually, it's like a portfolio of evidence type of thing. Yeah. You have to compile a portfolio of evidence and then present it to the council and then the council um, certifies you. So who verifies that? Put, so, I mean, I can make up things <laughs> and put them in my portfolio of evidence. So who do you typically work with who can then help you verify you as a... So, so, I mean, obviously the council has its own people that looks at everyone's portfolio. Um, but what, they, what, what you have to do is you must have some form of referees, yes. um, you know, in the process. So I can say, you know, in 2019, I was working for this company and we built a plant in the Northern Cape. Mm -hmm. And this is what the plant was doing. It ran so well, the client was impressed and we <laughs> made so much money. Um, but if there's no one to say yes, I was, and an, an, an somebody that is certified as, to, a? as a, or is registered as a professional, professional engineer okay. that can say, um, you know, I actually mentored this guy during this time, or I actually um, was his boss or something like that. And we did actually do this. And this was his role because also it's, it's about the role. You can't say you were you know, working on a project, but you are just there to observe what's happening. You will never get certified like that. You have to go from observing to now starting to add input to now starting to lead and it, it builds up from that. And then, and then that's when you 
are now entrusted with the with the responsibility of calling yourself a professional engineer and now you can consult in different businesses mm -hmm. you can do a lot of things on your own um rather than having to you know rely on you know a company yeah yeah so typically after you've started university how long does it does it take to then be when you can call yourself a professional engineer? it's uh, so the minimum period minimum period after you graduate is three years but it tends to take longer because it's you mm -hmm. have to collect um, you enough. Know, enough evidence. And you also have to convince yourself or believe that you have attained the level of competency because you don't want to just have the certification, but you know, you can't really do anything with it. Yeah. Yeah. I think confidence is a big thing. Mm -hmm. Um, especially if you're going to be doing things on your own. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And wh okay, what do you like mostly about your role? What do right. I like mostly about my yeah. role? Hmm. Quite a lot of things, actually. Yeah? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so where I am now, I like the fact that, you know, I get to travel to different places mm -hmm. um, because you're servicing clients that are at various places in the world, at various places within the country, at various places within Africa. So you have to go to different places. I like the fact, I like that, that, that part of it. Um, you know, the fact that you, you are able to, to analyze and mm -hmm. give input and, you know, um, advise on technical um, solutions yeah. um, that I enjoy quite a lot. And also because because it's 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 business we're selling. I mean, as much yeah. as we are engineers, yeah. we're selling. So you have to now you you when you when you're selling something, uh -huh. you have to, and especially if it's something which is worth you know millions of pounds or millions of dollars, you have to be sure that where you're going to be selling it, it can be bought. Like yeah. there's enough money to buy it. So you spend a lot of time looking at businesses looking at you know what market influences like you know various things mm -hmm. that would lead to an environment whereby the decision to go with what you're proposing would be a lot simpler so you have to have like good negotiation skills good negotiation skills as well good yeah. marketing skills yes per se, or sales skills rather so what do you hate most about it and i'll ask i'll tell you why i'm asking these questions what do i hate most yeah. about it um it comes with a lot of pressures at times. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, there's some people that, um, okay, because it's, uh, you know, it's an environment where you sell big machinery, big equipment, things that can, you know, if something goes wrong, kill people. There's a lot of re regulation, a lot of laws and so forth. So there's, in terms, in, in, in time, when, you, when you're designing stuff, there's a lot of paperwork, a yeah. lot of stuff that you have to go through to make sure that you comply, you know. Um, yeah. Have you ever found yourself the, in a project where things went like super south and no, you killed people? No. Oh. Um, just, just, just checking. <laughs> no. Um, I haven't found myself in that situation, fortunately. But also, it's, it's, it comes with a level of responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, not, I'm not yet at a point where I'm that guy that but soon you'll that be that, that, guy. <laughs> <laughs> that puts a signature and says yeah. this you know this is certified correct it will work i you know because yeah. you can go to jail if if yeah. if, it, if it uh if it kills someone it starts, yeah. yeah so i was asking these because i was trying to decipher you know how you know some people say not everybody's an entrepreneur you know mm -hmm. so how do you then decide okay let's say you're technically you're intelligent mm -hmm. or you can a critical thinker. Yeah. Um, who would you say should go out and be an engineer, specifically chemical engineering, which is what you're doing? So who, who should go out and yeah, be? Yeah. Like. I think somebody that um, is very curious. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if if you find that you are curious about a lot of things and you want to analyze things and you want to understand the detail and things, I think you would enjoy that. Um, that career and uh, yeah I think over and above everything that's the thing that I see as being the most critical yeah. okay yeah and then yeah oh, I you were gonna say no, no 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 okay no. so and like what is the 
one thing that you now in your role thought you'd never do, like as an the engineer? The one thing that I yeah. thought I would never do as an engineer. Yeah, that traditional engineers don't actually do. Like, cost. Costing? Yeah. Okay. I have to cost a lot of things that, and I don't like costing things. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say this is the solution and yeah. this is what it entails and somebody else must cost it. But also it's, 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 it's because of, it's not really something that I should be doing as an engineer. Um, it's just something that, you know, because of, you know, South Africa, the business environment in South Africa is very... <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 so a lot of companies um, tend to cut down in terms of what resources they invest mm. in. So, you know, I'm in a space whereby instead of having one person who does the actual sales, the business development, and one person who does the application and the process and stuff, which would be me, and then one person who does the bids and cost and, and you know, prepare the tenders, um, you know, those are three people, but I am in a space that I play a role in all three of those. But it's, I guess it's a good skill to have. It is a good skill to have, and um, I think it's a good skill to have because you know, if you if you start running your own business, yes. you have, you're gonna have to do all those things yeah. um, by yourself, unless if you've got enough money to hire, people. you know, a team of, of 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 people. Yeah. Or you get that tender, and you can just get the people. Yes. That also works. Yes. Okay. But but also you get that tender, you get the people as they take your profits. <laughs> you know, so you want. No, to I get gonna charge max, everything max, as a markup. Maximize I don't know. your profits. So okay, <laughs> if you yeah. can do the stuff, do it yourself. So, just closing remarks, any, any advice you want to give, okay, I'm going to put it in two parts. Mm -hmm. Advice you can give to somebody who's in varsity right now or is trying to do a career change. What advice can you give somebody who's trying to get into engineering? And um, the second part of the question, what advice can you give somebody that's in engineering and is trying to come up the ranks? Um, okay, somebody that's trying to get into engineering. engineering yeah. um, the you need to get into it for the right reasons be yeah, sure the right reasons. be sure um, my reason was money <laughs> <laughs> a lot of a lot of us had that reason yeah. and and i mean sometimes it's enough you know mm -hmm. i i i you know when when i was in high school up until like grade 11 yeah. I, I didn't want to do engineering okay. until i started studying a little bit further and i realized okay i can actually do this thing and they say it pays so let me do it and and i did it and i don't regret my decision okay, you know, that's I'm, I'm, cool. I'm well you know i think I'm, I'm i'm at a very good space um so i think you know over and above everything it gets very difficult that's the thing that's why i say you must get into it for the right reasons well, you want to solve make problems. sure make sure that the thing that makes you go there is 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 something that you you um you know it's it's a big driver for you that yeah. you are not going to give up for anything yeah you know if 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 it's just i'm um, not really sure you know sometimes it gets testing mm -hmm. that you may want to <laughs> yeah Okay, yeah. and then for somebody... Somebody that's already, already in engineering, um, hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's tough. I know it's tough. Mm -hmm. It was tough for all of us. I know... Tougher I than know. it was studying engineering. Say again? Tougher than it was studying engineering. Oh, you, I thought you meant somebody no, no, no. that is in, in university in it, yeah. studying engineering. Somebody that's already in it, well, they must just make it what they Work. want. Um, okay. It's... It's so diverse. There's so many different facets to it. You can make it anything you want to make it. So just make it what you want. Okay. Um, yeah, but for somebody that's studying, they must just heading, it's a he <laughs> hanging there. It's, yeah, it gets better. It gets better. We um, have to. Once you get out and, you know, you find a good company, you work in a, you know, you have a good job, it, you know, it gets better. Yeah. The future it gets very, very bright. And is there like a demand for your traditional engineers, would you say? Because um, there's the, lots of them going into banks. Yeah, I think I, my personal opinion is it's just, I think the South African job market is not, you know, if you look at it from a global perspective, mm -hmm. there is quite a lot of demand because, you know, there's, 
there's a there's a lot of places that are still developing mm -hmm. and wherever you have development mm -hmm. you need people that are going to be coming and you know proposing this is how we can do this this is how we can do this so building highways building mm -hmm. you know is it the m1 or the m2 that broke <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's 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 yeah. and i mean for reasons it broke because it's been it's very old and it hasn't yeah. been maintained properly okay. and you know government is not attracting enough um, of the right skills to keep yeah. the people that are, you know, so it's, there's, yeah. there's many reasons. Yeah. But yeah. I think, you know, in the South African job market, it's not unusual. In, in fact, it, it's become quite common to have companies, especially in the mining industry, retrenching mm -hmm. engineers, mm -hmm. um, you know. Because of automation. Because, else. Not necessarily because of automation, okay. because just trying to cut costs. Yeah. Because the salary bills yeah. tend to go quite high when you have a lot of these people that are, Failing you, yeah. Um, these crazy um, rates. So, yeah, it's. <laughs> so, get into engineering for the right reasons, and when you're in it, stick into it. And once you make it into the job, climb up the ranks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Carl. Yeah. Is that? Oh, it's it's a pleasure. Thank you it's very much. Thank if you, you have any more questions me. for Karamu, do let us know on the comments. You can DM us. We have a WhatsApp line. You can see the number at the bottom there. Let us know what you think. And if you answered your question. Other than that, have a good day, guys. And thank you for watching.